Time and time again, history replays itself. Unarmed civilizations fall prey to tyrannical leaders. December 15, 1791. The first ten amendments to the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, was ratified by the states. The great American experiment was underway. For the first time, men enacted into law human rights, not just government-given rights. The authors deemed those rights so important they made a provision to protect those rights so they could never be taken away. The Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. To ensure the balance of power remains in the hands of the people, the framers of the Second Amendment crafted 27 words. One sentence to succinctly and definitively protect our freedoms from controlling political groups, oppressive religious organizations, or from an abusive government. There is no mention of limitations or restrictions on the type of arms citizens can carry. There is no mention of gun control, no distinction between sporting use and military use, no language regarding handguns, shotguns, rifles, or even weaponry not yet imagined. What the authors of the Second Amendment did specify is the right of the people, not privilege, to keep and bear arms. Fact number one. The framers of the Bill of Rights believed in God. They fought for the freedom from religious persecution. They believed the right to self-defense is a fundamental God-given right that existed long before the creation of any government. Even the Declaration of Independence, written 15 years before the Second Amendment was ratified, clearly states, all human beings are endowed with certain unalienable rights and that governments are created to protect those rights. So, what exactly is an unalienable right? A right that cannot be transferred or taken away. Fact number two. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The language of the Second Amendment prohibits the federal government from infringing on the rights of the people. As clear as the First Amendment's language of prohibiting Congress from infringing on the right of the people to religious expression, freedom of speech, and freedom of the press, the Second Amendment is also clearly a protector of rights. Fact number three. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The Second Amendment refers to a well-regulated militia. The right of the people to form citizen militias was unquestioned by the founders. Alexander Hamilton, in the Federalist Papers number 28, expressed, When a government betrays the people by amassing too much power and becoming tyrannical, the people have no choice but to exercise their original right of self-defense to fight the government. In the Federalist Papers number 46, James Madison, the father of the Bill of Rights, argues, the ultimate authority resides in the people. And that if the federal government got too powerful and overstepped its authority, then the people would develop plans of resistance 
and resort to arms. Some interpret today's National Guard as the well-regulated militia. But the founders opposed anything but a small national military. There are some people that think that that phrase in the Second Amendment has an entirely different meaning. The phrase, well-regulated, refers to a well-trained, prepared, and disciplined citizen's militia. The Oxford English Dictionary from that time period defines well-regulated as something that was calibrated correctly, functioning as expected. Fact number four. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people, Further evidence that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state does not refer to the National Guard is supported by recent research. The writing style of the late 18th century legal documents typically began with a preamble. The purpose of the preamble was to state a purpose, not a limitation. Fact number five, abolished all citizens of all races should enjoy the Second Amendment's legal protection. Fact number six. Over the past 60 years, the interpretation of the term well-regulated militia has come under fire from the Federal Circuit Courts of Appeal and many lower court judges. Those judges have wrongly ruled that the right to keep and bear arms doesn't apply to individuals but have wrongly interpreted militia to mean the National Guard. But the words well-regulated militia had a far different meaning at the time the Second Amendment was written. In today's world, well-regulated is associated with intense government regulation. At the time the Second Amendment was drafted, the term didn't need to be defined. Colonial militias had been in existence for 150 years. With the exception of millers, ferrymen, and slaves, every adult male was required to join. It was your duty to report for service four to six times a year. You were required to have your own musket, bayonet, ammunition, and knapsack. If you were unable to supply your own firearm, the militia would provide you with one. Militias were well organized well regulated with the men reporting to an appointed captain not only did you have the right to own a firearm it was your duty although the constitution gave congress the power to raise and support a temporary army the framers feared a standing army after the revolutionary war the overriding purpose of the Second Amendment in guaranteeing the right of the people to keep and bear arms was to maintain a check on the standing army. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state meant ultimate power must be in the hands of the people. The Second Amendment is very specific about this. It is the right of the people, not the states, to keep and bear arms. <laughs>